hello and welcome to my youtube channel let us do r and d this is sonu punia as always we will be discussing about one component engineering topic in today's video also this time we have selected ross and rich compliance these both are the environmental compliance in the part 1 we will mainly be discussing about the ross compliance you can follow me on linkedin by searching let us do r and d so let's start today's uh, agenda will be the ross compliance complete guide uh, we will be discussing about the reach in another video i will provide you the interview questions for ross compliance and uh, i will also give you the component uh, engineering job links on the description of uh, this video on youtube you can also watch the previous videos which i have made on uh, this channel uh, the first video was on components engineering overview and the another one was components parameter verification and part creation so guys uh, let us see what is the ross compliance the ross compliance aims to restrict certain dangerous substances which are commonly used in manufacturing of electronic and electronic equipment which are also called as triple e the electronic and electrical equipments this is the limit which is specified in the ross directive for cadmium which is considered as most harmful for the human beings and the nature and the environment its limit is concentrated at 0.01% of the homogeneous weight of a product for the remaining materials the limit is 0.1% so what are the homogeneous materials the homogeneous uh, materials are which cannot be mechanically separated if we see on these pcbs there are lots of components which can be mechanically separated so in order to qualify for a whole product for the ross compliance each of these parts at their indiv individual level should also be ross compliant only then a product can be marked as uh, ross compliant for example let us take your mobile device the mobile device has a speaker in it a circuit board in it and other components electronic components like chips resistor and capacitor so all of those components at their individual level should be ross compliant to mark the complete product your mobile phone as a ross compliant device and only then you can sell this in the european union market so the question comes why the ross compliance was important what was the necessity of its introduction in today's time we all are surrounded by lots of electronic items and after their usage for certain period we just drop them and those products goes into the landfills if those uh, 10 materials which we have seen in the previous slides are heavily used in manufacturing of these products or uh, they will start pouring into the ground water and the from ground water it will add into the food chain of the human beings and the environment also and uh, these heavy metals can cause various diseases including cancer uh, so these are uh, very toxic and very harmful for nature and for the health of human beings to have a cap on uh, all all this uh, european union come up with this ross compliance directive uh, there are uh, three ross compliance exist as of now the first compliance which was uh, introduced uh, is in 2002 so this compliance was uh, applicable for home appliances small household appliances it and telecommunication equipments consumer electronics lighting fixtures electrical and electronic tools toys and sports and leisure equipments medical devices monitoring and control instruments automatic output devices so this had the uh, 10 materials the second ross was introduced in 2011 this was same as uh, ross 1 but only thing added was uh, other electrical and elect electronic equipment this was the new addition so whatever was not covered under these uh, uh, definitions in 2011 elect 
European Union uh, come up with the modification in the ROS 2 and they have uh, introduced that it will be applicable on ele all electrical and electronic equipment from 2011. This also had six materials. In 2015 there come the ROS 3. This had uh, everything which was in uh, ROS 2 and uh, additionally it had these four thalates in addition to the six m materials which are already available in ROS 1 and ROS 2 the ROS 3 had included these four thalates diphenyl thalate, buty benzyl thalate, dibutyl thalate and diisobutyl thalate so this had 10 materials now coming to how we can find the ROS status for a part the first step is to from datasheet or manufacturer website if that is not available we can look for the general ROS certificate the third step is to contact manufacturer and ask for the certificate of compliance for the specific part or general statement whatever they can provide and uh, if all of the above three options are not feasible then uh, we, we can ask for the material composition and uh, we can uh, decide based on that if those 10 materials are included less than the permissible value then we can uh, mark a component as ROS compliant uh, please note that uh, the ROS uh, COC with pertaining to a specific part number are preferred in industry after having known about uh, details for the ROS 1, ROS 2 and ROS 3 let us take uh, Molex part number 171573163 for uh, example so let us copy this part number and go to the Molex website when we search for this part number we will get the results for this part let us understand what is the part first so this is a backplane connectors this is how it looks like now uh, we want to see the ROS compliance status so scroll down to see what all details are provided these are the engineering documents then uh, here, it, here the details for uh, product environmental compliance so the EU ROS it is mentioned as compliance so yes the part for which we are looking that is uh, ROS compliant and uh, its documents are EU ROS certificate of compliance so if I click there I should get a certificate of compliance uh, we need to classify it whether this part number is uh, ROS 1, ROS 2 or uh, ROS 3 certified so for that let us uh, read through this document and uh, I find uh, the date 2015-863 which uh, confirms that this part is compliant to the ROS 3 and the additional information for uh, all the materials is also provided if you count this uh, all the materials this will be 10 so yes we can confidently say this part is uh, compliant to the ROS 3 and as earlier we have uh, discussed in the industry the part specific uh, COC is uh, that is the certificate of compliance are preferred uh, so in the table A after all these uh, statements from Molex the table is provided for the part number then its description is given and the ROS uh, status is given as compliance so this is uh, how we have to identify the ROS status for any given product. So uh, there are also some ROS exemptions which are uh, applicable and uh, which are uh, provided to some industry uh, that are for uh, military and uh, space exploration programs and for the medical equipments. Uh, so uh, there cannot be any compromise on uh, on the performance of military and space uh, components so uh, this is the link you can uh, read about all the ROS exemptions and uh, let me know for any questions if you have for ROS exemptions or you want a new video specifically addressing the ROS exemptions now coming to the interview questions what you can be asked is what is ROS what does it stand for so ROS it stands for restriction of hazardous substances name some ROS substances you can be asked to name some ROS substances they can be lead mercury phthalates you can uh, name six to seven at least uh, then uh, what is the permissible limit of substance they can name the substance or they can ask you to give the permissible limit 
uh, along with their name so the cadmium remember for cadmium uh, that is the most toxic substance the limit is 0.01 percent and uh, for others it is 0.1 percent uh, then uh, in the previous slides we have seen the difference for rows 1 2 and rows 3 they can also ask their introduction dates like in the coc by just looking at the in the date 2015 we we get to know that uh, the specific part is compliant to the rows 3 so you should know those uh, dates in order to correctly identify the rows version and the rows compliance status for a part number and the last question can be asked is what are the rows exemptions name few so you can uh, go to the link which i have given in this video i will also mention this link uh, in the video description on youtube as well